To create a domain ontology, open up Protege and create a new file. Once you have opened up a new file, the first step is to change the ontology URI. The ontology URI is usually a URL of where the file will be saved on the internet. For all of our projects, we use the following URL, bluelab.chpc.utah.edu slash ontologies slash schema slash the username of your choice and then the name of the file. Once you have changed the URI, simply save the file locally to your computer. Make sure to select Al XML syntax as your format. Once you're done saving your file, the next step is to add a direct import. We want to import the schema ontology, so select the second option. Import an ontology contained in a document located on the web. Then hit continue. In the next screen, you're going to want to copy paste or type in the URI of the schema ontology. Then hit continue. Once Protege was able to locate and download the schema file, you can hit finish. You'll know that the imported ontologies have been loaded once they appear in the imported ontologies section. To add your domain content, start by clicking on the classes tab. There are three main components that you need to create. First, to create an annotation variable, simply open up the hierarchy underneath annotation and select the appropriate semantic type for your variable. For this demo, we will be creating a finding variable called fever present. To create an annotation variable of fever present, we will need to create a subclass of the finding class. To do that, you click the add subclass button. Simply type in the name of the variable and click OK. Once you've created the variable class, you're not done. You have to create the components that make up your variable. The components that make up a variable in general are anchors and modifiers. Remember, an anchor triggers the context algorithm to start looking for modifiers surrounding that term. Therefore, in this example, the anchor term would be fever. So to create an anchor, you simply select the anchor class and then, again, hit the subclass button. You will then want to enter a name for your anchor. Once you have created your anchor term, the next step is to add the annotations to the class. To do that, you would simply click the plus. And all of the annotation properties come from the imported context and schema ontologies, so you do not have to create any of the annotation properties. You simply just need to fill out the information for any of the existing annotation properties. Most of this information can be found by looking up your term in the UMLS Terminology Services Browser. You would simply just type in the term that you're looking for and select the QE that best represents the concept. So I'm going to select the, this QE here and copy it and add it as the code for our fever anchor. In a similar manner, you can copy over the semantic type, the definitions, and the synonyms that are associated with your anchor term. Feel free to filter out all of the synonyms that are in other languages, as well as some synonyms that you just wouldn't find in clinical text. One example of that would be this body temperature above normal finding. You would never see this parentheses finding in the text next to body temperature above normal. So feel free to go ahead and leave that one out in your list. Once you have finished copying 
over all of the annotation properties for your anchor term, the next step is to add the anchor to your annotation variable. To do that, click on the annotation variable and click the plus next to equivalent to. Make sure you're on the object restriction creator tab and then find the property has anchor in the hierarchy on the left and then select your anchor term from the hierarchy on the right. Once you click OK, Protege will automatically create the restriction has anchor some fever for you. So now you have defined your annotation variable to have the anchor of fever. The next step is to add all of the modifiers that are associated with your annotation variable. For this variable fever present, we know that we want to have definite existence, that it's the patient that experienced the fever, and to make sure that the fever is current and not historical. So to do that, we will have to copy over all of the related classes inside the modifier ontology to our domain ontology. To add the modifier, you would simply, again, use the add subclass button to add the class. Make sure that you give the name of the class the same name that's in the modifier ontology. Once you have created the class, make sure you go ahead and add all of the lexical cues as individuals. You would do that by clicking on the individuals by class tab and then clicking on the add individual button. Again, you would name the individual the same as what it is in the modifier ontology and give the same annotation properties as you did for your anchor. So you want to make sure that you give it a preferred term. Also, be sure to add all of the synonyms and regular expressions that are associated with this lexical cue. The last step is to add the action to the lexical cue. To do that, you will have to click the plus next to object property assertions. To enter the English action, you're going to want to type in has action en over on the left and then the, on the right hand side you're going to want to type in the action that is associated with this and then click OK. You would continue copying over all of the lexical cues from the modifier ontology in the same manner. Before you assign the modifiers to your annotation variable Make sure that you copy over all of the lexical items associated with closures and all of the pseudo classes from the modifier ontology as well. In addition, make sure you copy all of the pseudo and terminators to each of the classes from the modifier ontology. Just to review, to create an axiom from the modifier ontology, click the plus next to subclass of and select either has pseudo or has termination on the left and then the appropriate closure group class or pseudo class on the right. Once you have all of the classes, restrictions, and individuals copied over from the modifier class, you're now able to go and add the appropriate modifiers to your annotation variable. To do this, you're going to repeat the same process that we did to create the anchor. You're going to hit the plus next to equivalent to, and you're going to select the appropriate modifier from the hierarchy under has modifier. So the first one that we're going to identify is its certainty. And then on the right, you select the appropriate modifier value, which is definite existence. And then Click OK. So continue adding all of the appropriate modifiers in the same manner. Once you have finished adding all of the appropriate modifiers, you can move on to your next variable. Be sure to save your file often so you don't lose any of your work.